In this video, I will show you how to get from this to this. Hello everyone, Roy Karkas here. This was a black and white photo of lifeguard tower number 4 at Torrey Pines State Beach in uh, La Jolla, California, which I painted on with acrylics, alcohol inks and oils. So the sky was painted in with opaque acrylics and used uh, alcohol inks on that. And then the rest of the image was uh, hand tinted with martial photo oils. So let's have a look how we did it. So for this piece, we're going to use the following uh, supplies and tools. And I'll, I'll kind of show what you in the order I'm going to use it. Palette paper, paper plate, two inch brush, half an inch brush, plus a few other brushes probably. Golden glass glazing liquid, which is the acrylic medium. Bunch of acrylic paints. Water, paper towels, masking tape, scissors to cut the masking tape, isopropyl, this is 99.5% but you can get away with less than that, a pipette for the alcohol, alcohol inks including some metallic ones gold and silver, a straw, disposable gloves, and then for the bottom part of the image, when we hand color it, a selection of martial photo oils, cotton rounds, and cotton swabs. And Winsor & Newton's artist glass varnish to varnish the piece at the very end. Okay, so f before we begin, we have to tape off the horizon and top of the tower. So it's going to be a little harder to do the tower. This 20 by 30 inch photo was printed with a light jet on matte Fuji Crystal Arca photo paper, which is a good type of paper to paint on, especially with martial photo oils, which is what I'll be using in the end.
don't have to be too precise. I don't mind if this gets covered. It's like a masking fluid that you could use too, but this tower still has it's not too much detail and it's large enough that I'm confident doing it this way. Because the masking fluid you would have to wait also till that's all dry. What I would like to do first is put down an acrylic coating with acrylic medium all over the sky, including this part of the tower. I'm going to put some alcohol inks here and then try to blow those and get some kind of sun rays or something later on. So, and in order to prevent that from sucking into this, this is porous this tape slightly porous and I don't want to get it sucked into it needs to be on top of it and then blow it away so first I'm going to cover this with acrylic medium this guy and I'll use a what's this like two inch flat brush You, you can paint directly on this type of photo paper, either with acrylics or with oils. But I like to have a nice, in this case here, ac acrylic like background I can work on. And especially like what I mentioned for the tower here. All right, now let this dry and then I'll be back. Now that this is dry, I would like to add a, a very light um, blue background. So this is titanium white on cerulean blue. This is going to be my generally colored background on which on top we'll do a bunch of other stuff later. Okay, and now this also needs to dry.
So you can see that this little cracks appeared and that was because my acrylic medium was not 100% dry yet, which is fine because we want to have some structure and stuff going on. So now let's grab some phthalo blue. I want to add some kind of bluish blue gradient, different blues maybe coming from top to bottom. Phthalo blue, some titanium white again. Some water with my little spray bottle. I want this to be very wet, a lot of water. I would like to, you know what, I might add some of that gloss glazing liquid because it slows down the drying time. still. Okay. And right now even, I'll add some water because I would like to stay this wet for a while. different blue in here. Ultramarine. Some more white. Feridian. And maybe for the very bottom here, we'll add some tad of yellow. And some white, that's a little bit too dark. There we go. 
And maybe then go back up here and add some of that here too. And some water. And now I would like to take some paper towels and just add some structure and mix it up this way. This also dry. And now I'm going to put again a layer of acrylic medium on here to seal all this and we can do other stuff on top of that. if it works this way. All right, that's it. And now we let this dry again. Okay, so now that this is also dry, actually this dried overnight, it took a long time, but I mean it hasn't been that warm here either, like, I don't know, mid 60s, maybe just under 20 degrees Celsius. Um, anyway, so now that's dry, I would like to add very watery phthalo blue paint to this and, and do the alcohol effect where I drop isopropyl um, onto the paint on this very nice lighter background we have. So let's grab some phthalo blue. And we need a lot of water. So I have to be a little careful not to mess up this part here. Okay, so, oops, I almost did it. But that's a little too dark, so I'm adding a little white. And then I'll dab this again. Okay. 
And now on this we'll add some alcohol. The effect is not that big, but it's there. You can see it, the effect appear there mostly. So now we'll let this dry. And now again, we're going to put on glass glazing liquid. And this is probably the last time. So after this step, I'm going to add alcohol inks. And I need a nice smooth surface for that. And then the last step is we're going to add some alcohol inks. So for that I'm going to turn around the piece. nice and smooth now we will have we do have a lot of these like crack things um, which I like but it may make it a little more difficult to get the ink the alcohol ink spread out so for this you probably want to wear gloves again because these alcohol inks stain quite a bit So I have several like cool colors of these alcohol inks. So I'm gonna use several of these. Maybe some metallic mixed in. And our isopropyl. And a straw. Okay, let's see. Let's just start with this guy, Glacier. I'll start here in the corner. It's already spreading out. Let's add some silver. And some pure alcohol. Let's do dilute it a little bit and you can spread it out a little easier. So I'll take the straw. All right. Same color again. And maybe that same color on the other side here.
pure alcohol. Well, pure, I think it's like 94% or something. Take a different color. This is monsoon. Okay, I'll do that on this side too. Aquamarine. Some Laguna. I'm also going back into the older the previous areas. So the cool thing about alcohol inks is that you can reactivate them. So now that I'm putting the alcohol here on the previous areas, they also get um, like liquid again. Okay, I think I don't want to add more color, but a little bit more of this. Maybe we can spread it closer to the horizon and like light in a light color. And now, a little bit of a tricky move. So let's grab some gold and silver. Add some pure alcohol and we're gonna blow that straight up
add some more alcohol. But that's kind of the idea. Okay, so let's remove this. A little tricky. Because the photo paper is so smooth. Looks a little funny, so what I'm going to do add some alcohol and then with a brush I'm tying into a little bit more into what looks like sun rays. And now we're going to color the rest of the image, the bottom part in the tower with Marshall photo oils. So let's grab some sky blue which I would like to put in the ocean and on the tower 
Maybe I'm going to mix slightly different color into the one for the ocean. There we have sky blue. And I like to work with cotton rounds and Q-tips, cotton swabs, with Marshall Photo Oils. So this is Fuji Crystal Archive Photo Paper, matte. So you, you don't need to pre-treat the photo itself to use with these oils. You can go directly on to work directly on the photo. thicker so I have lots of videos tutorials where I use Marshall photo oils so I'm not using a lot of pressure very lightly transferring the oil from the cotton round onto the tower. Or onto the photo, I should say, more, more general. It works nice with the sky that we did, this type of blue. Normally I like to uh, get rid of all the brush strokes, smooth this out quite a bit, but not doing it here, it's actually pretty smooth already. But since we have such a structured sky, I'm not going to bother smoothing it out too much. But now, let's grab a different kind of blue, this is Chinese blue. Which is a little bit, a little bit more towards green. And we're gonna put that in the ocean. You can see I'm going over some of the white water here and there, but I'm going to remove that with a um, cotton swab. Also on the railing, I would like to remove the colors there. And that's what's nice about Marshall photo oils on this type of photo paper. Or even when you have it pre-treated with a coating, on which I also have some videos, you can remove it very easily. The, the oils that is. Take a little bit more.
All right. Now let's do the corrections for this part. So I'm taking a clean Q-tip and start removing the paint where I don't want it. So like on the white water here, the breaking waves. kind of turning as I go, each time using a clean side. And now there's these very pointy ones, I, I think I call it like ITs, sometimes I call it something else. Um, nail tees, maybe? Um, which are very pointy cotton swabs and you can use those for more detailed work. So now I'm removing the paint from the railing. And believe me, it does make a difference. I mean, it seems very subtle, but it looks so much cleaner like this when you remove the paint from the railing. how it's picking it up. And I'll take a new one, clean one for the other side here. In order to get some of that color here too, down here, I would also like to add some of that blue to these pebbles here. So maybe we should do that now. I'm gonna go with the tower of the color of the tower again. Pretty good looking. So now let's, let's grab some burnt sienna for the rest of the beach here. And this works really well, these two colors, opposing colors, the blues cool blues and the warm brown sienna. Of course now we have to be careful with the tower, so I'm staying away a little bit and I'll finish that later with a q-tip.
can see it goes pretty fast. These are just big surfaces. Oil is transparent, so we don't have to worry about going around all the details that you see. Oh wait, I left this wet sand untouched, so I'll, I'll remove that later. Again, that's the nice thing about these oils. When you have the right substrate, you can easily remove it. I want it a little thicker on the foreground. Okay, let's take a clean cotton round. And I want this a little more, su more subtle, a little lighter. And then keep it thick in the front. And that's also how I like to work. I like to put it on thicker and then remove the places where I don't want it later. I think one thing I would like to do though, is because we have so many things going on in the sky, I would like to do a little bit more different, add a little more different colors down here. But like I said, first we need to um, finish this part here with a Q-tip. Oh, we're very close to the tower. There we go. Now this side that was pretty good already. I do want to remove with a IT some of the colors. Oh, that's not an IT. That got on the railing here now. Let's grab some sepia. I'm almost out with this color. randomly add some patches here, here and there. And then maybe also a little bit of orange. And remove some of the color that I 
that we added here. Oh, and I forgot this part here. Let's add that with a Q-tip. Because this is now a pretty small area. varnish frame I hope you liked the video please hit that like button subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time